there's kind of these like almost a schism or these various groups and camps within, I guess you could call the left, where people are looking at these protests and they're like, wow, this is amazing. They're protesting for these reasons and, you know, all of that. Great. And then there's other people that are like, well, let's kind of analyze maybe some of the the, the political context here, maybe what they're actually yes. protesting for, maybe some of the people yeah. that are participating. For instance, I've seen videos and images of people waving American flags, yes. uh, wearing yes. like MAGA, you know, Make America Great Again yeah, yeah, hats, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, maybe some yeah. British flags as well. Flag, oh, yeah. And I, yeah. I know that this probably doesn't represent the protesters at large, Yeah, I would I would guess. But this is bringing up some skepticism or some sense in, in people that like, oh, this is um, maybe being backed by the United States. This is maybe one of yeah. these, uh, co- they call them color revolutions, where they're backed by foreign interests to destabilize various uh, places around the world for different reasons. So w- can you speak to that a bit? Like, uh, you know, what is the general, I guess it's very generalized, uh, the, a huge generalization, but what's going on as far as the spirit of this protest, what they're actually trying to address and maybe foreign intervention or maybe some of the ideas surrounding U.S. or British involvement in this? Yeah. Okay. So now the the one few thing you must understand with the whole protest movement from the get-go, there was a Chinese phrase called Hing Dai Pa San Gok Di Lo Lek, which means when uh, brothers are climbing mountains, everyone is doing their part. So in other words, you climb your path, I climb mine, but we're going towards the top of the mountain. Right? Mm-hmm. So from the get-go, we've always had the spirit of everyone does their part. Nobody kind of looks down on each other going like, oh, you're only doing so little, you're only doing so little kind of a deal. Everyone does whatever they can. So that way you already build a non-guilty connection with each other of like, let's not become enemies just because I disagree with you. Remember, we're going up the mountain. You use your way. I use mine. Right. So that's number one. Now, the whole the, the, with the American flag and the British flag, there's a lot behind it. From the get go, when China first saw this happening, immediately their first response was foreign interference. Right. All this is backed by the U.S. This is clear interference, that kind of stuff. Now, there's a lot of that to talk as well. But so far. All the so-called allegations that the pro-Chinese side has been saying, in my opinion, has not been true, simply because they've been saying they're being backed, they're getting paid and stuff like that. And my having been part of the protest, I'm waiting for my paycheck. So I'm kind of annoyed that I'm not getting paid as they say we are. And at the same time, I'm talking to a lot of people, no one or nowhere have I seen any hint of foreign support. In other words, as in like the foreigners kind of guiding us, there's been a lot of silly conspiracy theories of like, oh, there's a white guy amongst the crowd. Clearly, he's an American spy from the CIA. And I'm like, guys, I know that guy. Okay. <laughs> he's not from the CIA. He's an idiot. You he's know, that kind a, of stuff. He's just a white guy. <laughs> he's just a white guy. Yeah. So there's a lot of that game of like, oh, here's another white guy. Let's take, let's make a story behind it. Because people keep forgetting is that Hong Kong is a multicultural city. And just because you're not Chinese doesn't mean you're not part of Hong Kong. Right. And but it's very easy if you're kind of narrow minded to say, like, oh, look at that Caucasian. Clearly, that's U.S. interference. It's like, really? He's Polish, guys. Come on. You know, that kind of a deal. Now, with the waving of the flags, from what I personally have seen and understood from talking to people and the news, the flag was more like symbolic of like a asking for help because. I'll be very honest with you. My perception of the whole issue with Hong Kong is we're kind of like the foster kid who's kind of getting pushed around amongst the siblings in the family. And every time the neighbors are knocking on the door saying, is everything okay? The parents are like, yeah, everything's fine. Don't, don't interfere with my family. You know? So it's kind of like we're being pushed around because our siblings are so nice. And we're the one who has these crazy Western ideas. Now, what happens is with the flag is also to get the attention of the Western world. Cause I mean, let's be honest, if you want American media or, or British media to pay attention if you wave the flag, it's more likely to be like, wait, what's going on? Why are they waving our flag, right? So that in its way was a, ta- it was a strategy to get some sort of foreign attention at least, to maybe get some aid. So actually, back in the G20 summit days, there was a big crowdfunding effort to basically raise money so we could post ads in different newspapers around the world. And also, so all the world leaders at the G20 summit, when they read the newspaper, will see a page that says, please stand with Hong Kong, stuff like that, to encourage them to discuss about the Hong Kong issues. Not but when the G20 summit was going on, it was still way early in the days. So the whole Hong Kong protest wasn't a worldwide phenomenon uh, being discussed. It was more like, oh, something's going on with Hong Kong. Well, you know, they'll deal with it. It's not our problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But 
that, but we had to try everything we could. So people would come up with cra- crazy ideas like we're going to post ads in, in the uh, New York Times and everything. And this is how much we need for a front cover. So let's raise some money. And you would see like within hours, you know, uh, one million U.S. dollars raised done. You know, within hours, crowdfunding, you know, because we just love the cause. Well, let's do it, man. This is whatever we can do. So things like that. Now, waving on the flags, yes, you could easily use that and say, oh, look at that. They love America. You know, oh, my God, American interference. But I also feel from what I've seen over and over and over again, that people who are waving the flags really are more for calling overseas attention and help. Because let's be very honest. Hong Kong, this little one dot in the whole world versus, let's say, China, we're dead. It's over, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But the importance of Hong Kong in the world economy and the whole world itself is much bigger than the, the, the size of Hong Kong. So we can only ask our neighbors to come and help us because at home and within our walls, we're in trouble alone. Our siblings aren't helping us. You know, our parents are kind of, in our opinion, interfering with our lives and what we're looking for. So we can only hope that our neighbors hear the noise and come knocking on the door. So the waving the flag, in my opinion, is a lot of that. Now, there could be also people saying, I identify as being British because we used to be a British colony. There are people like that. There are people who say, hey, you know, you, the, Brit, the British has kind of let us down because we were British. We should be British, you know. And how dare you kind of just disregard us and leave us alone after 97. So there's a lot of argument over there as well. But in my opinion, from what I've seen being amongst the protests, the flags are not <coughs> basically foreign interference as per se in a lot of propaganda. It could lead to people misunderstanding that. But honestly, from what I've seen and discussed and experienced myself, I cannot see that as the reason behind the flags. The flags really are just basically calling for attention and help.